Well, you know, I mean, this, this we have a particular discussion this morning, but we are waxing warm with, with, with just, you know, Carnival, the experience from a cultural perspective, from, from the perspective of the patron, and also the perspective of a parent, of a caregiver, of those who are charged with the responsibility of children, whether it's their own children, nieces, nephews, or you're just looking after a community. And I'm thinking this is a time where so many people get involved, from the mature to the very young, and safety is paramount. And we want to, of course, keep that conversation top of mind going into this very hectic week ahead. So we welcome from the Office of the Prime Minister, Gender and Child Affairs, and the National AIDS Coordinating Committee. We have some esteemed guests with us. Um, Amalka, he joins us again. And Kimberly is here with us. Kimberly Gilbert, youth rep from the National AIDS Coordinating Committee, and Amalka Sanatan, Assistant Director, Gender Affairs and Gender and Child Affairs Division. Happy Carnival, guys. Thank you for coming on. Same to you. Same Thank to you, you very much for having us. Listen to me, the Carnival campaign, I could understand why you'll choose this time to come out and, again, just bring these tips and reminders. Just uh, give us the perspective behind the campaign, what you anticipate will be the big takeaway as you do your media blitz and you put that information in the public domain. Well, for the National AIDS Coordinating Committee, we really want to ensure that persons don't find themselves in vulnerable situations that would make them susceptible to contracting HIV. So we can look at it, we look at it from three different areas. One would be the general carnival safety tips about avoiding dark areas and groups, watching your drinks, that type of thing. The other would be looking at even just HIV prevention basic consistent condom use, how to store your condoms, ensuring that persons living with HIV take their medication, and then there's also the aftermath. So what if something has happened? What do you do then? So persons can present themselves within the first 72 hours to a public health facility and be given post-exposure prophylaxis, which are drugs that can be taken within that time to ensure that they well, reduce their chances as much as possible for contracting HIV. Yeah, and again, it's, it's important information. Sometimes uh, we take so much for granted. People kind of throw their hands up in the air. They, they, they free up themselves mm -hmm. around this time. But there is life and consequences after the carnival. And I want to find out from Amalka in terms of Amalka, advice for children and most of the caregivers, because it's also a time people go about their way, go on their way, and sometimes leave the children to fend for themselves. Huh? Um, that, that in itself is an issue, but within that freedom some children have, they can also end up in some ticklish uh, circumstance and, and, and situations. Certainly. So in gender and child affairs, we're composed of three divisions, the National AIDS Coordinating Committee, Child Affairs Division, as well as the Gender Affairs Division. And Kimberly would have spoken to those priorities around HIV AIDS response at the national level. But when we look at child, child affairs, we have to ensure that children's rights are protected. Mm -hmm. So on one level, like Kiddies Carnival, we need to give them the domain because play is part of the national child policy, that their safety in the public sphere is important. At the next side, we have to look at child safety, where we cannot have child neglect because we let go of our responsibilities because as adults, we want to play. And then on the gender side, when we think about play, it's not an easy thing. You could have fun. But what happens when we have gender-based violence? unwanted sexual touching or harassment, public harassment, protecting the rights of people to say, I have privacy and I could consent because my body is mine. When somebody say, no, you cannot teeth a wine here. So that is why gender affairs and child affairs are so important to the carnival space. Are there any signs we could look for, any kind of red flags to, to identify that a child probably was interfered with, a child is holding it back something, something happened to them, let's say during the season, and, and certain key things you want to look for that you might want to ask a question or even carry the child in to, to see a, probably a professional? I would say definitely listen to children mm. because sometimes children do come and they do say it, but a lot of times they hear, they're lying, they're lying. You can also look for children who have become a bit more reserved. 
And I think Amilka could definitely add some more to this mm. piece, yeah. The first thing you would like to communicate is 996. You have to call the child hotline if you see something happening. Mm. The second thing is that this is a moment where some people are left behind, where children themselves have their own pursuits and ideas about carnival. They might be participating in steel pan sides. Those are children who play for major teams on Panorama, the big bands as well as the smaller bands. And what happens when they are in the public space? We need to look at it to make sure that they're not consuming drugs, that they really don't have alcohol substance abuse, and that is reflected in the national policy on gender and development. And we need to be able to identify safe spaces for children in the public sphere at all times, but as well as when parents might be outside, that they have the care and supervision that they deserve. Yeah. You know, when we consider the conversation, Carnival, yes, a very important time because there is so much activity, so much interaction going on. Uh, what's the mindset for even beyond Carnival as we, I believe rightfully so, continue with this important conversation? I would say take your personal safety as priority. You have to ensure that you do what is best for you. Ensure that even your sexual health is something that you take as priority. We want persons to make sure that they continue to get tested for HIV and other STIs and having other STIs actually increase your chances of contracting HIV. Persons may not know that. Ensure that you have conversations with your partner conversations that can lead to one, reducing gender-based violence as well, because it's important for us to set our own personal boundaries and conversations around getting tested. Yeah, when we consider, there are still people who believe if we conduct these conversations about sexual responsibility, it's almost like encouraging youngsters to get involved in the activity. There are still those who if, see and, and find issue with that kind of discussion with young people. Or what do you say to those who still hold that kind of perspective? I'll say bring the evidence. Bring, bring the in pericles. Yeah, bring the evidence because there's evidence to support that young people, once exposed to the information and it's age appropriate information, then there is delay in sexual initiation. Within Trinidad and Tobago, there is early sexual initiation here. And then what are we doing about that? We can't shy away from what is happening because it's going to keep happening. It has been happening for decades and it will continue. When are we going to put a stop to it? When are we going to face the hard truth that this is the reality that our young people are living in? And by us giving them the information, they can make informed decisions. Within Trinidad and Tobago, each year, 25% of the new infected persons are actually young people below the age of 25, every year. Mm. And the Children's Authority has numbers from as early as 10 years old. Mm. So 10 to 15 is within its own category of young persons who test for HIV. Mm. I think um, this morning that's a kind of a staggering statistic. Yeah, most definitely. We're seeing also a rise in cases among young people between 15 to 25. Who has given them the information? Because these persons are shying away. So what the National AIDS Coordinating Committee is doing as that multi-sectoral coordinating body is really trying to reach persons where they are, reach young people. We have the HIV helpline that goes into the vocational schools and they share information on HIV and other STIs. Mm -hmm. My day is starting with this interview and it's ending this afternoon, me doing a session online with some boys, educating them as well. And we're also sending some packages to them. So there's a lot of groundwork that's being done. And we really want Trinidad and Tobago to have the conversation. Let's be comfortable within ourselves, because I think sometimes it starts with us and our own sexuality. And it may be uncomfortable to have that conversation, but also look at people who can have that conversation on your behalf if you're not comfortable doing it yourself. Yeah, that's where the professionals come in. Exactly. Counselors. Yes. Exactly. Let me bring Amelka in to ask you in terms of uh, key gender-related issues that come up uh, during Carnival. Could you identify a couple? Certainly. The greatest festival on earth, if we say that as Carnival, is also a gender-equal one, where we respect the rights of people's bodies, men and women in this space. Just because we enjoy ourselves, it doesn't mean we have a license to 
access your body. Oppression cannot be a cloak for culture, and we need to be very clear about that. About that. The second thing is gender-based violence. I tell you, it's really unfortunate when we see how sexual violence is so prevalent in the public domain. We recently launched the Mixed Survey Report for 2023 in Ministry of Planning and Development, which really showed us the risk women experience moving into the public domain. And that is why we have so much challenges with mobility. During carnival time, we have masqueraders where people pay money, go at lengths to get a rope, not just because they're trying to be elitist or keep people out, because they would go at lengths to try to pay for their safety. Not everybody jumping up is a rich person. And gender-based violence therefore entrenches class divisions in our society where people try to almost build a gated community out of everything. The question we have to ask as a society is, is that sufficient? I think not, and I think Kimberly doesn't think that as well. So a child-friendly carnival, a gender-equal carnival, one that educates people about sexually transmitted infections and diseases, and really understands that you have sexual desires, you have interests, we have play, we have fun, but we could be an informed public to make serious choices about not just what we do, but who we are as a people. You know, that's the maturity, that's the kind of mindset we must adopt for us to preserve this beautiful experience that's called Carnival. I mean, there was a point in time, there was an order, people had an order. Yeah. And they, you know, you had certain rules and lines, but with time, obviously, things change and we have to sometimes remind folks of the order that should exist in the Carnival space. I want to thank you guys as we look to wrap things up. Uh, just about a minute again uh, before we go to the break. Any quick closing remarks, uh, Kimberly and Amilka, you could probably share it. Sure, I would like to encourage persons to call the HIV helpline. That is 800-4448 or 800-4HIV. And it operates between the hours of 6 a.m. and 12 a.m. So there's an 18 hour span mm -hmm. with which they can call and our active listeners would be there to answer any question. Even when it comes to, some persons may have a family member that's living with HIV and they don't understand how transmission is or how to work with that mm -hmm. person. We really want to break the barriers of stigma and discrimination so they can call the helpline to get more information. Well done, Kimberly. Amelka, you have the final say. Respetar a las mujeres y los niños, respecte les familias enfants, because some people don't understand in English. Respect women and children. And if you need support, 800 SAVE is our national domestic violence hotline. If you see something, say something. And I think we could have the greatest festival on earth, which is one where we respond to AIDS, where we have a child-friendly space, and where we have a gender-equal can experience. Well done, guys, and I, I truly uh, admire and, and respect this joint carnival campaign. Um, again, just important safety tips out there, and let's have ourselves uh, enjoyable and yet again uh, safe. Keyword safe carnival. There is life beyond the carnival, and we want the life to be a progressive and a good one. Let's take the pause. We come back and we work our way to the 7 a.m. news update. See you soon. Everybody put up your hands, no, we start to try and show them. Witness on you!